Hare Krishna, thank you all for joining. So we begin with the Pranam Mantras. Om Ajnana Timirandas Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Grimim Yat Kripatam Ham Vande Shri Guru Ndena Taranam Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Sapadantikam one day, Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sahavada Dutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Namom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvese Shashunyavati Paschatya De Shatarine Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Shri Varshabhanavi Devi Daitaya Kripabdhe Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Daine Prabhave Namaha Madhurya Jvala Premadhyaya Shri Rupa Nuga Bhaktida Shri Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namastute Namaste Gauravani Shri Murtaya Dinatarine Rupanuga Virudapa Pasiddhanta Dvanta Harine Nama Gaura Kishoraya Sakshad Vairagya Murtaya Vipralambara Sambhude Padambhujayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gaura Sakti Swarupaya Rupanuga Varayate Gaur Virva Bhumistvam Nirdista Sajjana Priya Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Shri Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Vancha Kalpata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Vya Evacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Namo Maha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gaur Tisve Namaha Pancha Tattvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Saktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Jayatam Surato Pangor Mama Mande Matirgati Matsarvasa Padambujo Shri Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpadrumadaha Shri Madratnagara Simhasana Statao Shri Madhrada Shila Govinda Devo Prishtali Bhi Sevya Manav Swarami Shri Manrasara Saram Bhi Vamsi Vata Tadastita Karsan Venu Sanir Gopi Shri Gopi Nata Ayat Vestunaha Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vishvanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaivan Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirai, Shanvatam Sokata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanaha, Vidunoti Shvet Aridyantastahi Avadrani Vidunoti Shvet Satam Nastapraya Shavadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Rbhavati Naishchiki Hare Krishna and thank you all for joining. We are continuing to discuss chapter number 18 which is titled as Maharaj Parikshet who is caused by a Brahmana boy. So far, what we have seen is that after explaining the rule of Maharaj Parikshit in the previous chapter, Sutu Goswami will continue to explain the uh, events that uh, led to the renunciation of Maharaj Parikshit uh, from this, um, from being a king, uh, and he was a most ideal king. So, in the first ten verse, <coughs> Maharaj Parikshit's birth and his about his death that how glorious was his death and that his dealing with the age of Kali is described and after that um, the sages wanted to hear because the sages knew how Sutta Goswami, uh, how Maharaj Parikshit actually renounced and they wanted to know about uh, what really happened <clears throat> and how 
the Bhagavatam was spoken to Maharaj Parikshit um, by Sukhadev Goswami. So they expressed their eagerness um, to Sutta Goswami. They, they expressed their eagerness to hear Krishna Katha. That is described in one, verse 11 to 17. And after the request of um, the sages, Sutta Goswami uh, started speaking um, the pastime. But before actually begins the pastime, he um, glorifies Lord Krishna. Yeah. So he, he is talking about that serving and following and conversing with the great soul. It removes uh, or it cleanses oneself from any disqualification they have, including the disqualification of birth or taking birth in the lower family. Because Sota Goswami himself took birth not as a Brahmana. <clears throat> And he also describes the power of chanting the Lord's name. The holy name is the same as Krishna. So it is very powerful, indeed very powerful. And it has unlimited potency. So the power of chanting he describes in 19th verse. And he talks about how the goddess of fortune hankers for the service of the Lord. And then he says that he concludes that who else can be called as Krishna? Uh, who else can be called as Bhagwan other than Lord Krishna? Nobody, because uh, nobody has that much potency of being called as the Swayam Bhagwan or Bhagwan. <coughs> and then he he gives the example that even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, uh, they are eagerly looking forward to purify themselves by taking the water that is flowing from his uh, lotus feet. And then um, he says that the dhiras um, who are firmly attached to Krishna can immediately um, give up attachment to this subtle body as well as this gross body. And they cannot immediately attain Paramahansa stage. <clears throat> so now he says that I am going to describe you Lord's Vishnu's pastimes or Krishna's pastime. So then he starts speaking about Krishna's pastime from verse 24 to 31. In So he narrates that once upon a time, it so happened that Maharaj Parikshit, he went uh, for um, hunting at the forest, for practicing uh, the skills of uh, archery and other skills. And he became very fatigued and thirsty. And while he was looking for uh, water, he came into a, hearty, a hermitage of Shamikarishi, who was deeply meditating. And Shamikarishi was in completely trance. And because he was in trance, uh, when Maharaj Parikshit came and requested him for a glass of water, he didn't receive him properly. So that made Maharaj Parikshit very, very angry. So that is described in verse 29 and 30, that Parikshit's anger. So Parikshit's anger was unprecedented. So normally the Kshatriyas are trained to uh, handle this kind of situation. But here we see that Maharaj Parikshit became extremely angry due to he was, hung, he was hungry and he was thirsty. This should not have happened. So therefore, this uh, incidence, um, Sutta Goswami is saying that this was an unprecedented event. Uh, and um, It has never been heard about Maharaj Parikshit that he became agitated because of this kind of situations <clears throat> and he became actually very envious towards the Brahmana and then he angrily placed a lifeless snake on the sage's shoulder with his bow and then returned to his palace. So this is discussed in verse 29 and 30. Last week we discussed verse 29. We will continue with verse number 30 from today. So, so here in this picture we see that Maharaj Parikshit whose face is showing, shown as being very, very angry, he puts a dead snake uh, as a garland to Shamikarishi. Verse number 30. Sato Brahmer, Brahma Rishir Asme Gatasum Ugra Rusa Vinar Gachandanuskotya Nidhaya paru, uh, puram agataha. When leaving the king, being so insulted, uh, 
he picked up a lifeless snake with his bow and angrily placed it on the shoulder of the sage. Then he returned to his palace. So this picture depicts that he is performing such act of garlanding Shamik Rishi who is uh, in full meditation with a dead snake. <clears throat> so here Prabhupada wants to clarify what is actually going on. And even the Acharyas, they comment on this and the next verse that how this particular incident took place and this was by the will of the Lord. Lord Krishna, this was happening by Krishna's will. So thus, uh, the will of the Lord is the king thus treated the sage tit for tat. Although he was never accustomed to such silly actions, by the will of the Lord, the king while going away found a dead snake in front of him and he taught the sage who had coldly received him. Thus, uh, thus might be coldly rewarded by being offered a garland of a dead snake. So, if we really analyze and see that in this situation, everything was pre-arranged by Krishna. Like Even the dead snake was existing there. So, that gave an opportunity for uh, Maharaj Parikshit to do something. You know, and basically place that dead snake as a garland because he was not received properly. So this is ordained by the Lord Himself. That's therefore the Acharya, including Srila Prabhupada, is saying that this is the will of the Lord. In ordinary course of dealing, this was not very natural. But in this case of Maharaj Pariksha is dealing with Brahmana sage, this was certainly unprecedented. It so happened by the will of the Lord. So this is happening. By Krishna's plan. Krishna has a greater plan for his devotee who is, who is very uh, pure and loving devotee which is Maharaj Parikshit. So he has a great plan for him and he has a great plan for all of us actually. So let's uh, see what uh, Bhagavatam reveals to us. Verse number 31 Esha kim nirbita sesha karano milite kshanai mrisa samdhir Aho Swit Aho Swit Kim Nushat Shatra Bandubi. Upon returning, he began to contemplate and argue with himself whether the sage had actually been in meditation with his senses concentrated and eyes closed, or whether he had just been feigning. Feigning means to pretend or to be affected by trance, just to avoid receiving the lower Shatriya. So because he was a very thoughtful, he was a devotee, he was a very thoughtful person. So uh, when some devotee uh, conducts this kind of behavior, naturally his heart, the, the Paramatma in the heart, he is going to tell him you know, that you, know, you have done something wrong. The so same is happening with <coughs> Maharaj Pariksha. He, he is thinking about his action, that why did I do this? And while thinking about his action, he is thinking about Shamik Rishi also. That was he really in trance or was he just acting? You know, he didn't want to receive me. Because the Brahmana is higher than the Kshatriya uh, by position. In Varnashram system, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Then, so the Brahmana is in the top class. So he was thinking whether the sage was just neglecting me because I am a Kshatriya. Uh, he is considering me as lower as Kshatriya, therefore he performed this act. So therefore, he is thinking about this. So Prabhupada in the purport, he is saying that Maharaj Parikshit contemplation, the king being a devotee of the Lord, did not approve his own action. And thus he began to wonder whether the sage was really in trance or was just pretending in order to avoid receiving the king who was a Kshatriya and therefore lower in rank. So this kind of repentance, Prabhupada says, repentance comes in the mind of a good soul as soon as he commits something wrong. So this repentance is very important. Very important uh, for all of us uh, practicing devotee life. You know, if we somehow or other we perform an action which, you know, um, which is not justifiable, justifiable, we should be thinking about it. And if it is confirmed it's a wrong action, we should be repenting about it. And this repentance is the process of our purification. By the process of repentance, we get purified from the result of the activity. <clears throat> now, 
Uh, Acharyas gives opinion, particularly Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thapur uh, gives the opinion about the Lord's plan. That he reveals that this is actually Lord's plan. Suppose uh, we don't know or we don't read Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thapur, we will not be knowing the story as it is, uh, as it was happening, <coughs> and what was going on. So, uh, or what is the motive behind this pastimes? Therefore, uh, to read the Shastra, we need the guidance of our predecessor acharyas from we should read from their point of view not just read this uh, the storyline and try to relish the story of course it's good to do that but to get real understanding it is always um, better for us to uh, read from the uh, the point of view from our predecessor acharyas so shila vishwanath chakra thakur and shila jiva goswami both do not believe that the king's action was due to his past mid-zest. So, um, our past scene, you know, it's a baggage uh, where the scene is performed and then there is a reaction to the scene. And because of that reaction, it forces us, the material nature or the prakriti forces us to act in a certain way. So, in this case, was uh, was that the case uh, in, uh, for Maharaj Parikshit to perform that action? And they simply denied, the Acharyas denied it, that this, this was not due to his past misdeeds. The arrangement was so made by the Lord just to call the king back home, back to God. So, this was Lord's plan. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thapur, the plan was made by the will of the Lord. And by the will of the Lord, the situation of frustration was created. Right? Situation of frustration was created by the will of the Lord. And we will also sometimes see that, you know, uh, the situations in our life will be created like this. Of course, we are not pure devotees, but for the purpose of testing us, Krishna will create, intervene and create situations where, where, where he could easily get frustrated. <clears throat> Based on our nature, he will create different, different situations. So, we have to uh, stop and then think about it. That is it the plan of the Lord and what is really the plan of the Lord. Therefore, it is very important to have uh, consultations in our life. A few good devotee friends where we can um, actually associate with them and openly discuss issues like this so uh, it's a uh, really a fortune to have good association where one can open up the heart when they are going through this frustrations of life and discuss their issues with a close devotee friend and then they can guide us properly so continuing the plan was that for for his so-called misdeeds, the king could be cursed by an inexperienced brahmana by in, infected by the influence of Kali. And thus the king would leave his hearth and home for good. His connections with Sukadeva Goswami would enable the presentation of the great Srimad Bhagavatam, which is considered to be a book incarnation of the Lord. This book incarnation of the Lord gives much fascinating information of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, like his rasas with the spiritual cowed her damsels of Rajabhumi. This specific pastime of the Lord has a special significance because anyone who properly learns about this particular pastimes of the Lord will certainly be dissuaded from the mundane sex desire and be placed on the path of sublime devotional service to the Lord. <coughs> So, Lord had a plan. So, Lord had a plan and what was the plan? The plan was that, you know, if Maharaj Parikshit acts in this way, you know, he garlands the uh, Shamik Rishi with the dead snake, then Shamik Rishi's son would get angry and in a anger he would actually curse. So, uh, other side of the story if we see that when Kali wanted to enter in Maharaj Parikshit uh, kingdom actually the entire world because, because Maharaj Parikshit was ruling Kali was not getting an opportunity to um, get a residence <clears throat> so because the Kali Yuga has to begin you know it has to do its task so it has to do its service 
so kaliyuga because the kaliyuga uh, had to act on the the minds of the people who were born who were going to be born in the age of kali so because of all this you know uh, he had to enter and establish himself uh, and but because maharaj parikshit was there he was not getting chance so then kali found a loophole so what was a loophole he entered uh, with this curse of this um, samakrishi's son shringi you know so he by that curse uh, kali could enter the, by that curse what will happen is maharaj parikshit will have to leave this world <clears throat> that was one plan at the same time before maharaj parikshit leaving this world you know krishna wanted to also give um, shrimad bhagavatam uh, and especially the pastimes which are of the lord which are there in shrimad bhagavatam and the specific pastimes the topmost leela of krishna which is a rasa leela that leela had to be presented to everybody that to be given to everybody and <clears throat> what is the significance of ras leela the significance of ras leela is this specific pastimes of the lord has a special significance because anyone who properly learns about this particular pastimes hence they learn under acharya a guide a teacher if they learn about this pastime of the lord will certainly be dissuaded from the mundane sex desire so this is given in the um, the rasa leela section which is um, uh, the 10th canto 33rd chapter and 39th verse that is the um, this is the last verse of uh, the rasa pastimes 7 10 12 33 34 so it's called as this rasa leela pastime um is called as the is uh, is called as rasa panchadhyay panchadhyay means uh, five there are five chapters in rasa leela then starting uh, with chapter number 29 chapter number 29 so 33 actually 39 that's not 29 it's 39 so <clears throat> so 29th chapter of the 10th canto to 33rd chapter panchadhyay is five adhyayas five chapters of rasa so this is the supermost pastimes of the rasa leela is the topmost pastime of krishna so and this is the the last verse of that so prabhupada is putting um, that anybody who reads this uh, particular uh, pastime of the lord you know what will the result they will be dissuaded from the mundane sex desire so their lust will gradually go away and will be placed on the path of sublime devotion service to the lord and then they will be engaged or they will be able to engage in pure devotional service of the lord so that is the importance of this hearing this rasa panchadhyay and but generally we avoid this and actually we should release this but we avoid this because we need to go to the 10th canto after reading the first nine cantos and this we understand the tattva of krishna and we directly jump into the rasa part of krishna krishna's pastimes and among the rasa pastimes uh, rasa means not the ras leela pastimes but among the pastimes of krishna with his devotees uh, we will uh, bring in our mundane concepts and then we will uh, pull down or reduce krishna's pastime to our level so therefore krishna's if you want to read the rasa pastimes we need should gradually um, go through canto by canto and understand the tattva of krishna uh, from the beginning and towards the end then we can go into the pastimes of the 10th canto <coughs> and then in middle of the pastimes of the 10th canto this rasa leela pastime is there and here these in the 39th verse it is given that anyone who faithfully hears or describes lord's playful affairs with the young gopis of vrindavan will attain the lord's pure devotional service thus he will quickly become sober and conquer lust the disease of the heart so 
we should be easily able to um, conquer the lust which is sitting in their heart now this past time is <coughs> if you read the verse it says that vikriditam vraja vadubhir idam cha vishnu so this past times of vishnu so now previous to this verse the vishnu word is not used we hear that you know the past times of uh, in the rasa past time is krishna's past time but here uh, specifically sukadev goswami is saying it's a past time of vishnu so vishnu and krishna they are non different so therefore he is saying it's a past time of vishnu lord vishnu and uh, we understand that you know it is whether it's krishna or vishnu they are non different so we can um, say that it's past time of lord vishnu um, and understand in this way also so the next paragraph proper talks about the reason why lord krishna puts his devotee into distressful situation why does he put krishna into distressful situation here we see that so uh, mahesh parikshit is going through a very distressful situation right now the pure devotee's mundane frustration is meant to elevate the devotee to a higher transcendental position so when we push or frustrate somebody krishna that is in our put in a distressful condition that helps to rise to rise about the mundane level so by placing arjuna and the pandavas in frustration due to the intrigue of their cousin brothers the prelude of the battle of kurukshetra was created by the lord so the whole battlefield was actually arranged by the lord and the purpose was this was to incarnate the sound representation of the lord that is bhagavad gita and similarly so by placing king parikshit in awkward position the incarnation of shrimad bhagavatam was created by the will of the lord so being distracted by hunger and thirst was only a show because the king endured much even in the womb of his mother yeah, he he was kind of the brahmastra was released and he had a great endurance power right from the womb and in that situation actually krishna protected him whereas in this situation krishna wants him back <coughs> therefore we say rakhe krishna mare ke and mare krishna rakhe ke he was never disturbed by the glaring heat of the brahmastra released by ashwatthama the king's distress condition was certainly unprecedented the devotees of like maharaj parikshit are powerful enough to forbear such distress by the will of the lord they are never disturbed this situation in this case was therefore planned all planned by the lord so normally a kshatriya is trained to go through this distressful situation and come out you know with uh, victoriously but in this situation he gave up and this is what was actually krishna's plan so this is the purport uh, from vishwanath chakravarti thakur and vishwanath chakravarti thakur is actually in the commentary saratar dasani he is saying that um, let's read uh, what uh, vishwanath chakravarti thakur has to say after the king had left he began to reflect and had the stage withdrawn his senses and actually been in the trance or or it was just a fake trance what would be the reason one should not think that the king had committed a sin uh, because of bad habits right so this action which as we discussed earlier was not the action of maharaj parikshit garlanding shamik rishi was not because of the his prior sins it was a desire of the lord to bring parikshit quickly to his side by having him become detached from the world by the curse of the sage having him take the association of sukadev and appearing in the form of bhagavatam in order to deliver the world and give a taste of the past times such as rasalila that he performed to some devotees who would be born later in the age of kaliyuga this is stated uh, by the wise this is understood from parikshit's later statement so in the later chapter also um, in the 19th chapter in particular uh, he talks about this 19th fourth this also shows the sinful actions of his pure devotee which are committed accidentally lead to the benefit in the future <clears throat> so vishwanath chakravarti is saying that uh, 
Now, this particular pastime shows that even if accidentally a devotee has committed a sin, that leads to benefit, some kind of benefit in the future. And why some uh, a sinful kind of thing leads to a beneficial situation? That is because it was a part of Lord's plan. And it was not done uh, intentionally because of some kind of malice or something like that. Uh, further, Vishnu Chakrita could continue. Parikshit's condition was produced by Lord Himself in order to create an apparent reason for the Lord's appearance in in the form of Bhagavatam. Right? Parikshit never had to conduct, uh, never had such a conduct even in his dream. Thus, it is said that this was something he had not experienced before. Therefore, he was saying it is unprecedented event. It was not experienced before. His state of anger did not arise from the bad karma, since the result of this act was great fortune in meeting Sukadev Goswami. So, if it, it was a bad karma, then it would have produced bad results. But here we see that because of this karma, also uh, he is meeting Sukadev Goswami, who is a great sage. So he had a fortune to meet Sukadev Goswami. Nor should one say that the cause of his great thirst. Mm. A moment later, without drinking water, being pained by hundred repentances, he returned home and immediately fasted until death. So, because he had a capacity to fast or not drink, which he showed, which he showed in the last seven days of his of his life, when he took a vow that he is going to fast till death. Uh, we'll see in the next chapter. So, if he could fast till death, means in seven days he doesn't drink or eat. If he has that much capacity, then how suddenly he becomes thirsty and hungry and he does such kind of action. So, this is actually a Lord's plan. Since he was filled with spiritual power in birth and death, he had conquered time in his middle age by restricting Kali. He must be considered uh, to have exceptional strength by the mercy of the Lord. So, he had exceptional strength by the mercy of the Lord. So, therefore, we should see these particular pastimes in such a way that, you know, this is actually Lord's plan. <clears throat> 32 to 50 is talking about. Um, so, after Maharaj Parikshit garlands Shamikrisi with the dead snake, what happens is his son, Hello. Hare Krishna, after Maharaj Parikshit garlands with dead snake, what happens is, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, uh, Prabhu, ye Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur ke commentary me uh, verse me uh, verse ke andar wo ye kyu likha hua hai ki fallen shatriya. Where is that? Prabhu, verse ka jo commentary hai, translation hai, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur ki not the commentary, matlab unka jo verse ka translation hai, uske andar. Prabhu, verse ka jo commentary I think there is an echo in your voice. Not the commentary, yeah. matlab unka jo verse ka translation hai, uske andar. Like last sentence, perhaps because of fallen Kshatriya had come. Yeah, he is thinking like that. Because of fallen Kshatriya had come. He is thinking, Maharaj, uh, Maharaj, or uh, Shamik Rishi is thinking that Maharaj, like that. The fallen Shatriya has come. He is thinking Maharaj, uh, Maharaj, or Swami Krishna is thinking that Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, Mataji, can you just mute? Yes, thank you. Okay, so in this case, the fallen Shatriya is uh, the the Maharaj Parikshit has been called as fallen Shatriya, and if we read Shila Prabhupada's purport. Uh, or the translation, it is uh, kind of similar, right? So, <clears throat> upon returning, began to contemplate and argue within himself whether the sage had actually been meditating with the senses, uh, meditation, meditation with senses concentrated and eyes closed, or whether he had been feigning, pretend to affect trance, just to avoid uh, receiving a lower shatriya. 
So Prabhupada is using the term lower and here Vishnu Chakravita is using the word fallen. So basically it's the same thing. It's talking about a, a, a lower situation. It is not as high as the Brahmana. Okay? Is it clear, Mataji? But Prabhu, मतलब वो परिक्षित महाराज अपने आप को fallen और lower शत्रिया क्यों कह रहे हैं? Because when compared to, he is just thinking within himself, right? He is thinking within himself that uh, Maharaj Shamik Rishi may be thinking because he is a Brahmana, he is higher in level, so he is considering himself as lower or fallen, you know, compared to his position. and that's why he is neglecting me that was his thoughts so this is a ek tarike se to fir ye even more devotee thought ho gaye right he is thinking himself lower right but in if you consider the situation he was not welcome and be not being welcome in from for that reason that this person is lower so therefore i will not even welcome him or i will not even look at him so devotee thinking himself as fallen that's his inner state of mind but here this is not some uh, interaction is not happening at that level interaction is happening at the level of that he was not being welcome properly and he's trying to figure out why he didn't welcome me properly is it because he's considering me as a lower person uh than him because he is a brahmana and i am a kshatriya or a, you know why did he or is he just um, you know trying to show that he is meditating or is not really in the reality is really not meditating he didn't want to welcome me so he is thinking all this kind of things situations are I mean, all this possibilities is going on in his mind okay <clears throat> yeah prabhu thank you hari krishna <laughs> Okay, so in thirty-two to fifty, uh, it's discussed that the inexperienced Shringi curses Maharaj Parikshit. His father regrets and prays for him. <clears throat> so his father is Shemakrishi, prays for whom? For Shringi. So Shringi is son of Shemakrishi, and as soon as he hears from his friend that his father has been insulted by a king, he becomes furious. So let's read. Uh, what is there given in bhagavatam tasya putro ati tejasvi viharan balako abar arba kahi rajnagaham praptim uh, praptam tatam shutva tatredam abravit <coughs> the sages had a son who was very powerful being a brahmana's son while he was playing with inexperienced boy he heard of his father's distress which was occasioned by the king then there and then and there the boy spoke as follows so he didn't even go to inspect what has happened but he heard from his friends that his father was treated in such a way and of course he was a brahmana's son so he was very powerful <clears throat> so just by hearing he started chastising the king you will see in the later verses so the power of good governance now prabhupad brings this point that um, in the purport now there there is um, no mention of the 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 governance side of it over here but prabhupad brings it up why because he wants to show that if the governance is good then what happens is the people get an opportunity to practice the varnashram dharma very properly so therefore prabhupad brings this power of good governance in this purport he says due to maharaj parikshit good government even a boy of tender age who was playing with other inexperienced boys could become as powerful as a qualified pampana this boy was known as shringi and he achieved good training in brahmacharya by his father so so that he could be as powerful as brahmana even at that age so this was the importance of good governance 
everybody got a good opportunity to practice their dharma <clears throat> and now we'll see prabhupad thinks of the point that the kali was looking for an opportunity to spoil this culture because this good governance means good citizens everything was going great the society was peaceful and kali had to enter so kali was looking for an opportunity <clears throat> but because the age of kali was seeking an opportunity to spoil the culture heritage of the four orders of life the inexperienced boy gave a chance for the age of kali to enter into the field of vedic culture right so because of this boy's um, inexperienced um, attitude um, he was given or he gave kali a chance to enter into this vedic culture and destroy the vedic culture hatred for the lower orders of life began from this brahmana boy under the influence of kali and thus the cultural life began to dwindle day after day the first victim of brahmanical injustices was maharaj parikshit and thus the protection given by the king against the onset of kali was slackened right so we see that you know how the way the kali entered is through this boy this boy was the weak link <coughs> and the boy is now going to curse maharaj parikshit we'll see that aho dharmam palanam bavinam bali bali bujam iva swamini angam yad dasanam dwarapanam sunam iva the brahmana boy, brahmana Uh, son shringi said <clears throat> so here this is shringi and these are his friend and we can see how kali is looking for how to enter and destroy this brahmanical culture <clears throat> so oh just look at the scene of the rulers who like crows and watch dogs at the door uh, perpetrate sins against their masters contrary to the principles of governing servants so normally the king would be the servant to the higher class of society which is a brahmana but this boy is saying that he is like a <clears throat> the king is like a crow and a watchdog uh, who should be at the door but he is trying to enter he is trying to enter into the hermitage of the uh, of the uh, the brahmana and then trying to uh, is actually wanting water in that in that particular situation but you know we'll see in the next verse he is saying that he is he is going to trying to capture the uh, the position of shamikrishi so the importance of following the social order of life <coughs> so the brahmanas are considered to be the head and the brain of the social body and the kshatriyas are considered to be the arms of the social body arms are required to protect the body from all harm but the arm must act according to the direction of the head and brain so it's though it's a one body um, the arms are supposed to do cert- certain things head and brain is certain uh, is supposed to do or act it in such a certain way still the head and brain is in control not the arms this that is a natural arrangement made by the supreme order for it is confirmed in bhagavad gita that the four social orders or caste namely the brahmanas the kshatriyas the vaishyas and the shudras are set up according to the quality and the work done by them naturally the son of brahmana has good chance to become a brahmana by the direction of his qualified father so somebody who is born in the brahmanical family has an opportunity to become brahmana or become a qualified brahmana uh, just by taking birth in that family as a son of medical practitioner is this an example has a very good chance of becoming a qualified medical practitioner so the caste system is quite scientific <clears throat> the son must take advantage of father's qualification and thus become brahmana or medical practitioner and not otherwise they may you know some people may take birth in those higher family like the brahmana or kshatriya but they may not have those qualities or qualification but generally it's not like that they are given an opportunity when they take birth in a particular family so that they have close association of people who are already practicing it so they can easily take uh, things very quickly 
without being qualified one cannot become a brahmana or a medical practitioner and that is the verdict of all scriptures and social order here in shringi a qualified son of great brahmana attained the required brahmanical power both by birth and by training but he was lacking in culture because he was inexperienced boy so he was qualified as a brahmana but because of his inexperience <coughs> um he still lack the the actual qualities of brahman he had some he, he took a birth and he also had a training but he was lacking in the culture mm-hmm. or experience actually by the influence of kali the son of brahmana became puffed up with brahmanical power so when this culture is lacking this is what happens so when we get power and we do not deserve that power then we get proud so by the influence of the kali the son of brahmana became puffed up with brahmanical power and thus wrongly compared maharaj parikshit to crow and watchdog watchdog is like a dog which is watching the home right so king is watching the country he is comparing to uh, a watchdog in the, the king in this way and a crow should be always outside it should not enter so but he tried to enter the home and request for water therefore he is comparing with the crows the king is certainly the watch dog of a state in the sense that he keeps vigilant eye over the border of the state for its protection and defense but to address him as a watch dog is the sign of less cultured boy so though he was a watch dog watch dog for the country he is a protector of the country but he cannot be called like that because he was a great king as well as he was a devotee two qualification yes he is a mahabhagavata <clears throat> so then propat says that thus the downfall of the brahmanical power began as they gave importance to birth right without culture right so this is a downfall the downfall of brahmanical culture started from this point downfall of the brahmana caste began in the age of kali and since brahmanas are the heads of the social order all other all other orders of society also began to deteriorate so because the head deteriorates then subsequently everything else deteriorates so the head started deteriorating in this way this beginning of brahmanical deterioration was highly deplored by the father of shringi as we will find so the father of shringi he was very experienced very cultured and he could see that oh this was a insignificant mistake and he cannot be given a death sentence uh, like and such a king you know he was such a great king um, so he repented that <coughs> verse 34 brahmane shatra bandur hi graha palo nirupita स कथम तदृह द्वास्ता सभांदम भोक्तुम अर्हति द डिसेंडेंट्स ऑफ द किंग किंगली ऑर्डर आर डेफिनेटली डेजिग्नेटेड एज वॉच डॉग्स एंड दे मस्ट कीप देमसेल्फ एट द डोर सो द वॉच डॉग शुड नॉट एंटर द होम राइट दैट्स व्हाट इज द इज द पर्पस ऑफ द वॉच डॉग सो श्रींग इज सेइंग दैट द वॉच डॉग हैज एक्चुअली एंटर्ड द होम on what grounds can dogs enter the house and claim to dine with the master on the same plate so how dare maharaj parikshit entered his home and he wants to eat with the master so earlier the dogs were always outside the home you know now the culture is the dogs are inside the home <coughs> but in, in the previous vedic times the dogs were never entering the home they were given Uh, food and everything all the facilities outside the home so he's saying that on what grounds can dogs enter the house and claim to dine with the master on the same bed because maharaj parikshit is asking for water he is thirsty and he is asking for water he is thinking he is trying to um, be on the same platform as his father shami krishi <coughs> so prabhupad again uh stress about this point that the beginning of the downfall of brahmanical culture 
inexperienced brahmana boy certainly knew that the king asked for water from his father and the father did not respond he tried to explain away his father's in hospitality in an impertinent pertinent manner befitting an uncultured boy he was knowing that his father didn't welcome him and he knows the brahmanical according to the brahmanical culture anybody who comes to their door you know should be well respected and you know attention must be given that is a part of the vedic culture but he didn't do his father didn't do it <clears throat> of course there is a reason for that too that he was in meditation but that should not the, the boy should not react in this way he was not at all sorry for the kings not uh, not being well received on the contrary he justified the wrong act in a way characterized in a way characteristics of brahmanas of the kali yuga <clears throat> so he behaved in a way of the brahmana of the kali yuga he compared the king to a watchdog and so it was wrong for the king to enter the home of brahmana and ask for water from the same pot okay. um, earlier this was also there that there were different pots uh, used in the home and i have actually seen this with my own, my own eyes you know uh, with different pots used in the home for different purposes and people coming from outside they are given different pot uh, water from different pots and even the glasses and everything was also not same which was used in the home the dogs is certainly reared by its master but that does not mean that the dog shall claim to dine and drink from the same spot <clears throat> so prabhupada says that this mentality of false prestige is the cause of the downfall of perfect social order and we can see that in the beginning it was started with the inexperienced son of brahmana as a dog is never allowed to enter within the room and hearth although it is reared by the master similarly according to shringi the king had no right to enter the house of shimikrishi according to the boy's opinion the king was on the wrong side and not his father and thus he justified his silent father <clears throat> so when we read this purports you know it gives us a more idea about what is being going on <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in the consciousness level of Um, either shringi or either maharaj parikshit or shamikreshi what is going on in their mind so therefore it's very important to read the purports of every verses verse number 35 krishna gate bhagavati shast uh, sa, uh, sastari upa uh, upapatha gami nam tad bhinna setum adayaham samsi pasyat me balam so after the departure of lord shri krishna the personality of godhead and supreme ruler of everyone these upstarts have flourished so this who is saying this so this is um, shringi is continuing and he knows about lord krishna and he knows about the relationship of lord krishna with maharaj parikshit so he knows all these things but still he is saying and this is all because of anger you know if you see really when somebody gets angry um the mind is so disturbed that you know they start speaking up anything and everything <coughs> yeah so therefore in bhagavad gita it says the three gates to hell is lust anger and greed <coughs> so the anger is because of the lust right um, and when people also become greedy they also become angry so anger is the the physical reaction to something going on in the mind so he is saying that after the departure of lord krishna the personality of god at the supreme ruler of everyone these upstarts have flourished our protector being gone so if krishna was here, our protector he is gone and now this upstarts maharaj parikshit is upstart he is they have started flourishing therefore i myself shall take up this matter and punish them so he says that i am going to punish this king now just witness my power so he is discussing with his friends so now he is going to show his power to his friends <clears throat> so this is very childish uh, 
so and then kali prabhupada is trying to tell us that kali is going to enter uh, or show its power through this child <clears throat> so this is what prabhupada is saying this is the spell of kali yuga and this purport is very important for us because this kali yuga also works on us <laughs> the spell of kali is not working only on this child but it is also working on us this inexperienced brahmana puffed up by little brahma tejas became influenced by the spell of kali kali yuga maharaj parikshit gave license to kali to live in four places as mentioned here in before but by his very expert government the personality of kali could hardly find places allotted to him <clears throat> so maharaj parikshit didn't kill the personality of kali but is gave him residence in totally five different places including gold <clears throat> but it was very difficult for kali to live uh, in the kingdom of maharaj parikshit the personality of kali therefore was seeking the opportunity to establish authority and thus by the grace of the lord so here very important by the grace of the lord he found a hole in the puffed up inexperienced son of brahmana so he found a place to enter and this was by the grace of the lord krishna made this arrangement <laughs> so uh, kali in our situation also works through us right so um if we have to be really really careful when we speak or think of something that is it kali's influence on us uh, even when we while we are interacting with the devotees we have to be very very careful and 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 keep the check the check for us is very simple prabhupada has given the check is guru sadhu shastra if it is aligning with this guru sadhu shastra our action should be aligned to this three things guru sadhu and shastra otherwise there are chances that you know we are affected by the influence of age of kali <coughs> the little brahmana wanted to show his prowess in destruction and uh, here there is a important point that when we normally you know if we don't have power we don't have uh, something to show up or show something but as soon as we get power we get puffed up with the power um, comes up this pride and we get puffed up and we think okay you know because i am in a certain position uh, I'm, i'm i'm talking about you know in relationship to us so this can happen i mean this doesn't happen uh, with everyone but this can happen to us that when we get some power some position you know though it may be a position uh, from which we should be serving but we start thinking that you know i have some power i have some position and let me uh, utilize this and show my prowess so this can happen to us therefore you have to be very very careful especially when we had we have some powers you have to be extremely careful and what is that care we need to take uh, or how should we take that care so we should be always working uh, or doing things in the mood of doing as a service and yeah. a mood, mood mood of doing as a service to please krishna so if we have that uh, measurement stick with us that is the action of mine pleasing to is it is it in the mood of doing service or is it um, there to is it done to please krishna if not you know then we consult with other devotees who are seniors you know when we have good relationship and discuss with them before taking any action <coughs> so this is our yardstick you know so here the personality of kali therefore was seeking the opportunity to establish authority and by the grace of the lord he found a hole in the puffed up inexperienced son of brahmana the little brahmana wanted to show his prowess in destruction right so there is a enjoyment also in destruction when somebody has power and uh, you know knowledge and power uh, like all the curses which we see we'll see in 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 the in the bhagavatam also there are so many curses um, devotees gives curses to each other you know there's so many thing 
So when we read Bhagavatam, one way it can be thought that oh, you know, now I have become devotee, you know, I can also curse somebody. We, this can kind of th- thoughts can come in our mind. You know, we be very careful, very very careful. <clears throat> so uh, we want to show our power and destroy things. Now actually, that gives a subtle kind of enjoyment, where the something is under our control and we destroy things. You know, it gives certain kind of enjoyment in our. so the little brahmana wanted to show his prowess in destruction and he had an audacity to punish such a great king as maharaj parikshit so why he think that he has audacity when I mean, basically he had that you know he had the power to kill the king because he was trained you know he had brahmanical prowess so he he could do it so he wanted to take the place of lord krishna after his departure so this is what it is actually he wanted to play the controller the proprietor and the enjoyer these are the principal signs of an upstart who wants to take the place of shri krishna under the influence of the age of kali yes this very important line so actually we all come into this material world to play the part of krishna or to become krishna and this is how we become we want to be the controller proprietor and enjoyer and as soon as we get an opportunity um, specific opportunity like that then you know uh, we become very or there are the ch- let's put it in this way not everybody but it becomes but uh, an opportunity is given to us where we can become like that so one has to be extremely careful and therefore continuous reading of shastra continuous reading of shila prabhupad's purport keeps us in check and and it keeps us balanced in the mode of uh, being a servant of the servant an upstart with a little power wants to become the incarnation of the lord there are many false incarnation after the departure of lord krishna from the face of the globe and they are misleading the innocent public by accepting spiritual obedience of the general mass of people to maintain false prestige in other words the personality of kali got an opportunity to reign through this son of brahmana shringi so basically the kali wanted to enter and he got a chance through the he found a loophole to enter through the uh, the son of shamikrishi which is shringi <coughs> verse 36 इति उपाश्रिशी he wants to destroy the world it was so furious like that <clears throat> so what he did do he touched the water of the river kaushika while speaking to his playmates and discharged the following thunderbolts of words so he is going to now he is going to curse maharaj parikshit <clears throat> so this was shringi's greatest mistake right so prabhupa says that is great mistake the circumstances under which maharaj parikshit was cursed were simply childish it appears from this verse shringi was showing his impudence impudence is means not showing res- showing due respect for another person um, maharaj parikshit was a great king a great devotee so respect has to be shown to him he was a leader of the entire kingdom <clears throat> he was emperor actually so shringi was showing his impudence he means he was not showing respect to other person in this case maharaj parikshit among his playmates right so this is another lesson for us to learn that when we are uh, with our friends uh, we should not disrespect somebody in a uh, we should not talk in a, about others in a very disrespectful way that's uh, uh, that's a sign of not a cultured person so among his playmates who were innocent <clears throat> any sane man who 
would have prevented him from doing such great harm to all the society to all human society by killing a king like maharaj pariksit just to make a show of acquired brahmanical power the inexperienced son of brahmana committed a great mistakes yeah so he wanted to show this is another thing he wanted to show his power to his friends so just to show his power to his friend he ultimately did a great mistake of killing um, the great king <clears throat> verse 37 इति लंगिता मर्यादम तक्षका सप्तमे अहानि दक्षंत दंक्षति समकुलान ग्रा गारम चोदितमे तथा दुरुम द ब्राह्मणस सन क्रश द किंग्स दास ऑन द सेवेंथ सो दिस वाज अ कर्स सो इफ यू सी श्रिंगी विद हिज रेड हॉट आईज यू नो ही इज नाउ कर्सिंग महाराज परीक्षित so what is he saying what is the curse he is going to give to maharaj parikshit on the seventh day from today a snake bird will bite the most wretched one of that dynasty maharaj parikshit because of his having broken the law of etiquette by insulting my father so he is calling maharaj parikshit as the most wretched one of that dynasty and from the seventh day from today the snake bird Takshaka is going to bite and kill the king. <clears throat> so this was the misuse of Brahmanical power. So Prabhupada appropriately puts that the misuse of Brahmanical power. Thus, the beginning of the misuse of Brahmanical power began. So Brahmanical, the misuse of the power began from that part. and the brahmanical culture started dwindling from that point thus the beginning of the misuse of brahmanical power began and gradually the brahmanas in the age of kali became devoid of both brahmanical power and culture the brahmana boy considered maharaj parikshit to be kulangra <coughs> kulangra means or the wretched of the dynasty but factually the brahmana boy himself was so because only from him did the brahmana caste became powerless like the snake whose poison teeth are broken <laughs> so prabhupada very nicely puts that he is calling the king as wretched but actually he is wretched because from him the brahmana started losing their powers uh the snake is fearful as long as his poison teeth are there otherwise he is fearful only to children the personality of kali conquered the brahmana boys first and gradually the other caste thus the whole scientific system of the orders of the society in this age has assumed the form of a vitiated which it means spoiled caste system which is now being uprooted by another class of men similarly influenced by the age of kali so now everybody is is against the caste system so first the brahmanas declined the the qualification of the brahmanas uh, was deteriorated and then then all the other classes because they treated the brahmana classes created other classes um, seeing them as very lower so now the other classes of people brahmana kshatriya so the kshatriya vaishya and shudra they don't consider people as you know the brahmanas as very high or knowledgeable or whatever you know one should see the root cause of vitiation and not try to condemn the system as it is without the knowledge of its scientific value so this system chatur varna maya system krishna is saying it was created by krishna so it had its own validity and if the brahmanical culture was there then the society would be governed properly and everything will work very systematically and smoothly but because the brahmanical culture is not there everything is in chaos but because of this spoiled caste system people think that the caste system itself is bad therefore they reject this caste system altogether so propa this in the last line is saying one should 
uh, one should see to the root cause of this uh, vitiation, which is why it is spoiled, why, why this whole system was spoiled. One should see at the root cause. And we now know the root cause. The, the root cause is because of this arrogance of this Brahmin or inexperienced uh, Shringi. That is the root cause <coughs> of the fall down of the Brahminical culture. And we should not try to condemn the system as it is. The system is good and it, it had reason. It had a scientific value. There was a purpose for setting up this system. But this purpose was lost because of the ignorance of this boy. So, um, today there is a program at Temple. So, I will uh, stop. Uh, unless anybody has any question, uh, discussion, anything. Um, if not, we will stop here. So, thank you so much for joining. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Maharaj Parikshit ki jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol. Thank you. Thank you Hare Krishna.